up you guys? It's Anna and this is my first video on this channel. Hopefully this I'm going to be uploading more videos like this. I did an interview with the amazing band Assuming We Survive and I was so happy to get the opportunity to go to their show and interview them and talk with them and really get to know them and what their music's all about. So I hope you enjoy this interview as much as I did um, and get to know the band a little bit better. If you haven't checked them out already, please do. Um, Assuming We Survive uh, they just got signed recently. Their new album is coming out, um, so it's coming out Friday if I don't upload this before then. Um, so everybody just go check them out. They're really great people. They're really down to earth. And um, yeah, if they're watching this, I wish you the best of luck on your journey. Um, and yeah, and also go check them out on Warp Tour. I believe they're playing the Cyclops stage. I might be wrong. and. If I am, I'm sorry, um, but yes, definitely go check them out on Warp Tour and get to know them because they are some great people. So here's at the interview. Okay. So, hi, what's up? I'm Anna, and I'm here with uh, Adrian from Assuming We Survive, and uh, I'm just going to ask him some questions. So the first one's kind of an icebreaker. Uh, what's your most awkward on a prank you have? Uh, I can't say it. I can't say it. It's pretty, it's pretty bad. Who is it to? My mom. <laughs> Okay. Pretty bad. Uh, what was your inspiration behind your band name? Behind yeah, the band name was, was one of those things where I, I, I got in a deep discussion with, we were trying to figure out band names, and then I was talking about uh, losing friends and like just everything I've been through, and I was like, well, assuming you survive this, like, hopefully I'll make it out alive, and then it just kind of clicked, yeah. I was like, well, that could be anything, assuming you survive relationships, friendships, or jobs, life in general, like, what are you going to do with your life, you know, assuming you survive it, you know? So you came up with the band name? Yeah. Nice. Why was 18 days, 18 days? Because we were literally on on tour for, at that point, 18 days, and uh, our guitarist got really sick in Mount Shasta, so we ended up stopping, he was in the hospital for like eight hours, and we started writing that song, and it was like, I was like, well, we've been on tour for 18 days. And I was like, oh, okay, well, that could be something. So we just started, I just started writing it, and it just came out that way. And hey, did you go to preschool? I don't think I did. Yeah, no, I think I did. <laughs> I was probably, it was in Germany, and I don't remember any of it. Okay. Did any of the other members that you know of not go to preschool? I want to say, I don't know, actually. <laughs> I, should, I should ask them that. Um, what are, where do your song inspirations come from? They come from everything. They come from what I go through, what my friends go through, what I see. There's a lot of times where I like to like walk out of my house with a no plan to pen, no destination, just walk and like, serve, and like not have a time to come home, not like not have a destination, just kind of look at the, at the world for what it is. And so songs will pop up like that. Like that. Can you speak any other languages? I speak three languages. So I, I speak English, I speak fluent German, and Spanish. Can you say something in those languages? Hola, me llamo Adrián. Es un placer conocerte. Uh, ich bin Adrian von Assuming We Survive und uh, mach's gut. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, describe uh, one member of your band in one word. Phil. <laughs> Amazing. Why? <laughs> He's just one of those dudes. He's like one of the funniest dudes I've ever met in my life. And... He's just so talented in many ways. So, do you have any nicknames? Uh, I, uh, yeah. I mean, one the band gave me is Lag. Where did Adrian go? Because I literally, <laughs> they can never find me ever because I'm just too hyper. So I like to walk around. I'm, I'm never in one spot for too long. So that's one of them. One of the many. Um, any tips for kids wanting to start a band or getting into the music business? Yeah, I'd say don't let anyone tell you that you're not good enough. Don't let anyone tell you that you can't. And like, just know that no matter what you do in life, like the biggest wall you have in front of you is your own wall. The other walls don't even exist. They don't matter what, it's kind of hard to say, but like what your parents say don't matter in a sense. What your friends think of you don't matter. What anyone else thinks of you doesn't matter. It's all about what matters to you and what you think about yourself. So once you get past all that, just fight through it. And nothing good comes easy. Like being a band, like the first time I started playing guitar, like I could not get my fingers to do anything. And I was almost gonna give up and I didn't. I just, everything takes practice. So just practice your butt off, be passionate about it and do it for the right reasons. Like that. Um, how do you practice on the road? Um, we, we get drunk and do a lot of covers. We just start jamming guitar. That's, That's like our only practice really. 
Um, do you have any guilty pleasures? Yes, peanut M and M's. I have some lots of them, by the way. <laughs> like the past few shows, I did a Periscope and like someone asked me like what my favorite candy was. I was like peanut M and M's. So now the past three shows, people have been bringing me peanut M and M's. So I literally have like oh. twelve pounds of peanut M and M's. But yeah, it's my guilty pleasure. I literally have a bowl next to my bed and. My wife caught me, like, literally eating them in my sleep. I was literally passed out, reaching over <laughs> to grab the M&M's. And, like, I woke myself up because I guess I knocked over the remote. And I could taste M&M's in my mouth. So I had been eating them for a while. So, yeah, that's, like, my guilty pleasure. Do you have any pre-show rituals? Um, talking to friends and fans. It's, like, my biggest thing. Like, uh, what's your favorite song on any of the albums? It'll be on the new record. So on the new album... I have, uh, well, there's two. One's called Open Water, where it's talking, pretty much talking trash about myself. All my, all my bad parts of, of my personality or what I've been through and, or what I've done in the past. And how I've, uh, it's, it's made me suffer in different ways, but I've learned from it. And then, um, and then there's a song called The End, just because it's very, uh, yeah, it's a very sexy song. <laughs> um, worst on stage mess up. First on stage match. So, uh, we were playing House of Blues Anaheim one time, and um, it was my birthday, so I couldn't stop myself from drinking too much. Don't don't drink. <laughs> but uh, I wasn't like too bad. But uh, we had a song called "We'll Meet in the Night Sky." And uh, we also have a song called The Hunted. Well, we had just got done playing The Hunted, and I told everybody... Oh, actually, we just got done playing The Night, uh, Night Sky, and they were playing The Hunted, and I was like, I want everybody to put their cell phones and ladders up, make it look like this is The Night Sky. This song is called We'll Meet in the Night Sky. So I, now, I, I essentially announced the same song twice, Aww. but it was a very embarrassing moment of the way I did it. So that and the other night, actually, at Glass House, I was crowd surfing on the surfboard, and they brought me around to the stage, and I went to jump off the surfboard, and I, I stepped onto the monitor, which is slanted, so I rolled off the monitor. <laughs> I was running straight into my drummer, Chris, so for that not to happen, I kind of like turned, so I curved around, but when I did, I had so much momentum, I literally jumped off stage, landed on the barricade, I don't know how I landed it, and I was just like, so there's a picture I just posted where my hands went up in the air. It's because I did that. I jumped on the surfboard, slid onto the stage, ran, and almost flew off the stage. But I landed it. So that's enough. Woo! Um, what's your favorite venue you've played? My favorite venue, I mean, there's a couple. Um, the Hard Rock in Orlando, Hard Rock Live. That's a venue I've been wanting to play ever since I was 16. And I got to play that on the Super Film Store. Um, so that was a dream come true. And then the Glass House in Pomona. That's like my favorite venue in, in the country. Like, it's our hometown venue. But the venue's awesome, the sound's there, the sound's awesome, and the staff there are like the best people in the world. Um, who are some of your personal inspirations? My sister, is definitely one of my band members. Because um, we all have, we all come from different, different homes. Some of us, <clears throat> some of us from broken homes, some of us from good homes, and so they're an inspiration to me daily, which also helps me become who I am. And uh, everyone I get to meet, actually, is a real inspiration. Um... How were you acquainted before you started your band? Well, me and Chris are the only original members. Uh, we started this band in 2007, and I was in band for a long time, doing a lot of touring, and that band broke up. And so after it broke up, I was just chilling, and I would uh, I would actually produce and manage Chris's old band, and I'd write songs for them. And so when I was ready to start my own band, I went to Chris. I was like, "Dude, you're gonna be my drummer." And like. I was like, well, I'm in another band. I was like, no, well, you're going to be my drummer. And I just kind of stole him. And then um, Phil kind of, through mutual friends, came out to see us play at a House of Blues Anaheim show. And, like, we we knew we were going to need a guitarist. And he was like, I'm saying kind of the same thing. He's like, I'm going to be in your band. Yeah. I'm like, all right, dude. And he just had the right attitude. And then we met Joe through playing shows with his band a lot. And his band broke up. And one night I went to his house, same thing. I was like, dude, you should be my bass player. Even though he was a singer. But I knew he was a bass player back in the day. So... He decided to do it, and our voices complement each other very well, so I was like, dude, it would be perfect. And then last but not least, Johnny, we were looking for a guitarist, and we found Johnny through Craigslist, randomly. Um, uh, Chris actually put out an ad and was, got a response from Johnny, and Johnny, was, they were going back and forth, and we shared some videos, and we thought he was very good, and finally Johnny was like, what band is this for? And Chris was like, assuming so, I was like, dude, no way. Uh, one night I was playing a show in Pomona, and someone gave me a, a ticket to the glass house, and I walked in, and 
Adrian, like your singer, was crowd surfing on the surfboard, and I fell in love with that band. That night, I went home to my girlfriend, told him about you guys. It's like I've been a fan of them for years. I used to go to all their shows. So it's kind of that's kind of how like everyone kind of like matter and interact. Nice. Um, so if you didn't do music, what would you be doing now? If I didn't do music. Oh man, I don't know. <laughs> I like I love everything, so I'd probably be a cook. I'd probably have my own restaurant. Um, <laughs> I would probably have thirty thousand wiener dogs. Um, I don't know, man. I don't do it. I'd probably be skydiving like every day, or, like doing something crazy, shooting guns. Like I don't know, my own moped gang or something. <laughs> cool. What would you do if music didn't exist in general? In general, I'd probably die, like, <laughs> wither away. Like, <laughs> um, what is your funniest tour memory? Funniest tour memory? Oh man, there's a lot of them. So funniest is going to be a hard one. But I would say... My funniest tour memory was probably every night on the Supervillain store. Just to yeah. sum it down. Just because the Fun Universe boys are crazy. Um... The Attila boys are nuts, and the Metro Station boys are the sweetest dudes on the planet. So every night it was just like insane, and there was so much shenanigans every night. That's funny. There's like, there's too many stories to tell, and I cannot like single out any one of them because they're so funny. Like every night it was just ridiculous. So have you pulled the tour prank? We do every tour, except for on the Super Bowls. That's the one tour we didn't because you, know, you don't tour prank falling in reverse unless they tour prank you first. <laughs> and they didn't really tour prank us, except for the last day of the tour. Um, Ryan, our manager, the drummer for Falling Reverse, like, ended up getting on the microphone and singing every lyric to our songs on the microphone, but horribly. And I could not, I didn't know where it was coming from. I was like, <laughs> we were all tripping, like, what the heck is going on? And then finally I see the lights come up in the very back, and there's Ryan by the sound booth with the microphone and a grin about this big. I was like, oh, Ryan, so... Okay. Yeah, Last question. Do you ever, like, jokingly play with lyrics on stage, all like, the in the song, like, uh, Credence... All the time. All the time. Uh, there's a song called Hey Girl and Smack where I go, <laughs> well, how's the lyric go? <laughs> oh, crap. How's it go? <laughs> I can't even remember how it goes. We don't ever play it anymore. Oh, shit. How's it go? Well, I switch the lyrics up to I'll make a batch of pancake batter instead of whatever the hell it is. I can't even remember what it is. Well, there it goes. <laughs> Just um, remember the yeah, alteration. The, yeah, the alteration's the one that I remember. This is the better version of the song. I should have recorded it all about breakfast. All right. But well, thank you so much. Thank you I so appreciate much. it. It's all my right. pleasure. And this is Adrian from Assuming We Survive.